Hello world, my name's Chip Justice and I'm with Seth's Mushrooms. You're probably wondering, just what the heck is this guy doing? Well, right now it looks like I'm burning mycelium. But it's really a whole lot more than that. What I'm doing right now is I'm trying to simulate the environment, or the conditions in which a satellite comes back down to Earth. And whenever it does, it has to go through a lot of heat. And what I want you to see, it's not burning through. In fact, I've been cooking pretty long, pretty darn long here. And it's really amazing how long this will go without cooking off, or burning through, or burning a hole in it. In fact, if you look really closely, I even made a hole so it would try to get through sooner. But it's not happening. Wow, that's impressive. And then that right here, now by the way, what I'm doing this with is what we call bricks of mycelium. And I've made four bricks here uh, to, again, be an experiment on uh, what I need to do to build my satellite. Uh, yes, you heard me right. I'm putting a satellite in space based on mycelium. Welcome to my five-year journey, and this is the first video documentation of my journey. A couple of years ago, I got into the. I had an idea uh, that mushrooms were very powerful, uh, amazing. They do wonderful things. They heal us. They make us better. They protect us from even things like the coronavirus. And they also protect us, as you can see, from flame. Uh, and it's also used as a building structure. Now right here, this mycelium, this has not been prepared. This is uh, mycelium grown uh, and then not cooked. The bricks that you see in front of you, well those bricks are cooked. Uh, they were heated at 225 degrees for several hours because they are rather thick. And what that does is that um, it turns the, the, the my, living mycelium into a petrified substance, which right here, this brick is 35% of the weight of whenever I started. Now, if you ask what's in this, right now, this is simply sawdust and um, soy hulls mixed with some water put in some mycelium in our lab, uh, which we'll show you some pictures of that, and then we put it into our incubation chamber, or incubation rooms, uh, and where it'll sit for about four weeks, and then uh, after that, we actually take the bags that are in our incubation room, and we put them into our fruiting chamber and we get these beautiful mushrooms. But that's really not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about how we take this, which is again uh, sawdust and soy hulls, and we turn it into a block. Now this uh, is, happens to be a spent block, meaning that mushrooms have already fruited from it, and I can use it for just about anything. And you can see that, yes, it's a little charcoal, but it didn't actually burn through. In fact, if I, I could probably, very good. I even open it up and you'll notice there's a little bit of smoke there, but it's not cooked through. The mycelium really is uh, pretty amazing. It really does do well when it comes to uh, protecting from heat. In fact, I'm gonna show you one more better. Now, my wife, she probably is not going to get very happy about this, but, well, heck, you, you, well, it doesn't hurt. I've already shown you how I was holding on to the mycelium while I was cooking it. Let's put this back up here. Let's see if we can melt this chocolate. What do you think? I don't think it's going to melt. In fact, I think it's going to stay very nice and... Um, cool. Uh, you know, it's almost room temperature on the other side of that brick. In fact, I'm going to turn the power up a little bit so you can see how I'm really trying
trying to give it everything I can. I'm trying to burn that ice cream. And it's really not burning. Again, this is my initial structure that I'm using to build satellites on. And now, right now, it looks like a brick. Let's see. Yep, that's pretty darn good. Still hard ice cream. Sorry for that. So, the reason for doing that is again to show you the protective capabilities of myocilium. And this is why I know it can be a great resource for a satellite. What I plan on doing over the next five years, well, actually, over the next year, I plan on building some structure. Um, and it'll probably be cube fashion uh, and have four corners so it'll look much like a cube or a square uh, but it w won't have anything inside and again I'm just going to try to make the support structure for the satellite to uh, demonstrate its capability now you ask about how hard it is wow that's still cooking away I'm going to take this mycelium and I'm going to stand on it, but I'll be back in just a second to show you more. Well, we'll just keep going because, hey, they can edit that out in post, right? So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these two bricks, it's a little hot, but I'm going to stand on them, and they're really not buckling. I'm about 180 pounds, give or take, depends on the day of the week. But you can see they are taking it. Well, one kind of fell apart, and that might be, who knows, we'll figure that out. But the other one, completely fine. Now, granted, this isn't perfection. This is my first demonstration of the capability of being able to uh, use myocilium to make a space satellite. What I plan on doing to make this harder, uh, there's several experiments that I'm going to do. One, I'm going to try reinforcing with fiberglass. Now, I prefer not to do that because once we do, that takes the 100% the biodegradability out of it. And really, I want to keep this satellite as very much biodegradable as possible. It's going to be a little hard for the electronics, I know, but hey, we'll work on that. Actually, I believe that if we do this right, uh, you're going to be able to see how we're going to one day 3D print this satellite. And I, I'm not the first one to, to 3D print with mycelium. Uh, in fact, I'm going to show you some video clip of all the wonderful things that people are doing with mycelium nowadays. I mean, they're, they're making leather. Uh, leather stronger than cowhide. And that leather actually, uh, real leather takes several years to, uh, to grow that cow and to get it to a condition where you can then uh, unfortunately kill the animal and uh, take off the hide and turn that into leather. Well, with mycelium, you're not killing or harming any animals. Uh, and in fact, you're using regenerative material or actually recycled material, whether it's uh, compost uh, and uh, soy hulls and so on. There are other materials that we're going to be putting into our substrate to make it more durable. Uh, the next time that the next brick that I make I plan on adding in some flour uh, as well as I plan on using instead of um, sawdust I plan on using uh, hemp fiber. In fact, uh, so I just ordered some hemp fiber today probably be here in about a week so I'm really looking forward to uh, to that experiment but there's other things that people are doing besides just leather they're building shoes they're building uh, clothing surfboards in fact it was really amazing to see people now are making surfboards out of mycelium and uh, one of the nice things about these bricks is actually I could leave this sit in water uh, if this had uh, excuse me yes it is mycelium I could leave it sit in water and really mushrooms would start to grow. And the one company uh, that does, uh, that makes surfboards out of California, 
they figured out that the, if they put a resin over top, that that protects and seals in the mycelium inside. And I plan on doing very something very similar with the satellite. In fact, uh, I, I want to take nanotubes and put it on the out, outer perimeter of the structure. And a nanotube is uh, one layer of carbon atoms. Uh, in fact, you can take a piece of tape uh, on a piece of graphite pencil and you can pick off one single layer of graphite, graphene. And that is ultra strong. But the problem is it's it's a uh, it's very labor intensive. Uh, it's challenging to make, and again, it's only one single layer. I plan on taking mycelium and putting that into uh, into the center of the structure. It weighs less than uh, than most uh, things out there, like styrofoam. In fact, I put it on the same level of styrofoam. But we don't want to use styrofoam because. Styrofoam is cancerous. It's been proven according to the National Toc National Toxicology. <laughs> I'll get this right. National Toxicology uh, Program and the U.S. National Research Council have both determined that styrofoam is cancerous. And even just working with it, you breathe it in, and it's cancerous. Well, I'm still breathing in the smoke from the wood and the soy hulls and again it's very natural uh, in fact it's not even uh, uh, really itching my throat as uh, other smokes uh, would tend to do uh, this actually has a pretty uh, nice smell or a nice aroma to it but so other things that people are making uh, they're making furniture they're making lamps, they're making paper. Uh, in fact, they're even making buildings out of mycelium. So if we can make all of these things out of mycelium, why can't we make a space satellite? Thanks again, YouTube. I really appreciate uh, your time. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing this little experiment. Stay tuned for more, and have an awesome day. Take care, all.